Hey, good morning once again. We're uh, starting a journey in the book of Ephesians. This is our second day. So we're in Ephesians chapter 1. We're going to look at verse 3 through 5, and these are big, sweeping verses. Again, Paul is still in that Roman imprisonment. He spent more time in the Ephesian church than any other church, three years. He's now writing back to them. But this first chapter, he goes all the way into eternity past where there's no one there but but God. Uh, God as he has eternally existed uh, in, in the personages of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. In other words, <clears throat> he's going to take us into thought that's before there were any created image-bearing beings, either angelic or human, what was going on in the mind and heart of, of God. And so we'll pick it up and you'll, you'll see where he was thinking. Verse 3, he says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. So all these blessings that we receive are by virtue of our being in Christ, united to Christ. Verse 4, here's where it gets, you know, kind of big. He says, for he chose us in him. Now notice, it's not that he chose us arbitrarily. He looked down through the tunnel of time, and those of us that would become united to Christ by trust, we're, that's how we get in Christ, become a part of him. We're the chosen. So, so the chosen, when the scripture uses the term the chosen or the elect, it means that God saw that some could be reached, that some could be brought back to himself in a lasting relationship of trust. And he said, they will be my chosen. They will be my, my full family members, and, and I'll develop them to the very image of Christ himself. So it's not that, that God just chooses some and overlooks others. That's a terrible teaching that, that's been around for a time. It's saying that the chosen are those that God knows in advance, his foreknowledge knows in advance, are those that will ultimately turn back to God by trusting in Christ. They, they choose him and become a part of the chosen. Let me, let me start again. Verse 4, for he chose us in him before the creation of the world. Now here's, that's where we go back into eternity past. Before the creation of the world, to be holy and blameless in his sight, in love he predestined us to be adopted as his sons. Now, we had another word there, predestined. It says, in love he predestined us. Now, some stop right there. It's not that in love he predestined us. It says, in love he predestined us to be adopted. It's the process that's predestined that we would be brought back to God, drawn back from a place of distrust, from a place of fear and guilt and shame, we'd be brought back through Christ and, and adopted into the family of God. It's just, it's just using a term to show the, the mechanism that God's going to use to bring us back into union with himself. So let me, let me start again. For he chose us in him, in Christ, before the creation of the world. So this goes back before the world was created. Uh, I suspect it goes all the way back before any uh, sentient beings were created. Uh, in love, he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and his will. So let, let's kind of let our minds go. And, and this is one of the things we need to learn to do when we read Scripture. You can read Scripture and you can just get the raw, basic interpretation. You know, this is what it says. And... Um, you know, we, we at least to some degree have an accurate understanding of it. But if we really want to meet God when we read the Word of God, we've got to stop. We've got to pray. We've got to think. We've got to let the Holy Spirit guide our imaginations a little bit. So let's go back because this verse takes us all the way back before humans were created. And, and let's ask ourselves some questions. If God did this in love, if all this is taking place in the past in his mind and he did it in love, uh, the question that I've often asked people is, what is the most loving thing that God could do? Uh, the, the very highest thing, the very kindest, the very greatest thing that he could do. And the very kindest, highest thing, the most loving thing that I believe God could do would, would be to make beings like unto himself. Beings that could experience life at the level that he himself did, <clears throat> or he himself does. You know, um, an insect experiences life but not like a human. A flower experiences life, but not like a human. A dog or a cat experiences life, but not like a human. The greatest gift that God could do would be to make beings that can experience life like he himself does, but he knew from the start 
the incredible danger that that would bring. He knew that mankind would, would fall. He knew that an, the angelic creation would fall, that they would rebel against him. He knew that they would bring into existence evil, and he knew from the very start, before any sentient being, before any angel or any human was created, he knew what we would do with this gift of freedom and that we would bring evil into existence and that it would cost God ultimately his personal sacrifice to break the power of evil to um, win back the trust of humanity and, and angelic civilizations as well. And so he knew all this in advance and yet he still created with full knowledge of the damage we would do, <clears throat> the pain that it would bring him, the sacrifice it would require of him. And so this is one of these great passages that takes us way back in eternity. So if you've put your faith in Christ, here's what this is saying. God in eternity past, before, way before, eons perhaps, before you were in existence or I was in existence, he knew you, he knew me by name. He knew that ultimately we could be redeemed or brought back into a trusting relationship with himself through Christ. And he intended for us to be kind of uh, his personal family from all eternity. And, and so you, your name, your destiny, uh, it's, it's kind of been sealed in eternity. And this doesn't mean that you don't have free will and that you and I don't need to exercise a free will. But it just means that from eternity past, God's heart has kind of known us before we ever came into existence. Okay, we'll, we'll stop there today.